Let's start. You know, um, when you start something, go to AWS, Amazon Web Services, right? Amazon. Uh, now Heroku, they create some layers. Now, if you guys can all pay attention, uh, Heroku, when they did, they when they started, they create, they uh, they automate the process, create a an EC2 on Amazon, can create a server on it, and then you can push your Rails app to it, get pushed done. And then people love it, and then they're like, okay, let's make it more powerful. Let's, this is the build pack for Ruby, but if you push, oh, this is PHP, run it. If you push again, like this is Python, it will run, it creates its own you know, server for each uh, type of application. But it has to scale, so then they don't depend on server, they use Dino. So they use this Dino grid system, and allow you to scale based on Dino, so it's a, they use virtual server on top of virtual server. You know, if you have your own server here, it's easy. SSH into the, the server and do it. That's a physical server, right? If you use another way, scalable is buy a server from someone else. That person also has a physical server. So then you access to it. And then if you want to make it easy to add RAM, add hard drive and all that, you want virtual server. Because then that person just give you only one gigabyte, but his server is 10 gigabyte. But when you need to pay more, the person can give you more. So software can create all this virtual server thing. And Heroku does all this crazy cool stuff. Um, even, you know, Matt, the Ruby guy, actually works for Heroku. Right? Now, what we're doing now is something really simple. We get a virtual server on Heroku. It's an Ubuntu server. And we push our code to it. And this knowledge is important because... Now, if you have any empty computer at home, you as long as you can turn on SSH and you can just SSH to it and you can deploy it and you can have your server there. It's the same knowledge everywhere, right? So, what is it? So, this is called EC2, which is your own, uh, you know, can get your server based on demand. So, I don't have much money. I will start with something simple. So, if you click on launch instance, it takes you to... Uh, this is a bit crazy stuff, right? And Amazon machine image. So you can decide what operating system it is. So when you click, I, I want to choose, you know, Ubuntu. And of course, for your project, you can choose a free tier. And I select that, I go to step two. Now you have, can have Windows and a lot of things. This is the bare bone operating system, right? If Amazon, uh, uh, you know, machine image over time, Let's say you take an AMI, you go there, you install A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Let's say you take a Windows machine and then you install like Office on it and you save it. So take a snapshot of it, then you can post it to your own, you know, AMI. So next time when you boot up a machine, it has everything. So this is like ghost image, you know, uh, that, that when your server admin, whoever, at, the company can install. So community creates a lot. So if you go here, you can find something that has Rails on it already and stuff. The problem is people set things up with different paths to different places. And it takes more time to find out where it is. So it's maybe better just do it by yourself. So I just say select this guy. And then when you select it, it takes you to this place. Uh, I only go for the free tier. So what is the free tier? T2 Micro, that's just the name of the package. I have this elastic CPU, right, like computing unit, uh, one core and 2.5 gigahertz, uh, one gigabyte memory, and it will attach to, in, uh, you know, EBS, which is just, it's like your hard drive. Now you can scale your hard drive. It's just, you're actually getting a CPU and a hard drive that's plugged together, but you can separate them. Okay, uh, I am just getting this guy. Obviously, you see network performance not high, no, low priority, no problem. I will uh, review and launch. You can set more details, any like, you know, extra configuration. So, and then, you know, again, it's about the security. Uh, in the past, I showed you guys that if you have access key to Amazon, to upload files to Amazon Bucket, make sure the keys only have access to Amazon Bucket. This time, the server, it says, hey, I need access to my server, so I need it to be accessible. So you open the uh, TCP you know, 22 port for SSH. 
some people pref prefer to change the XSH part. I don't think it really matters, but you can change it to some number that people can try to hack into your server. They don't know what port, but it's easy for them to just try any port anyway. So it's, this is just a very small layer of security. Uh, you can probably add one more thing. For example, here, I say, improve this. This is security group, which is here. This group open SSH port uh, open to the world, which is fine. If you need to be more careful, you can open to only one uh, specific IP that you have. Okay, obviously that's very hard, right? Because it's only very you know uh, if you decide to something that you, you you only access from your company, which is hard. You work from home, you work from coffee shop, and then anything else. Uh, I think down here there's nothing super crazy. Uh, just know that every time you create something, know that okay, well here it mounts the server on this dev path and here's the device uh, it's useful to know what what is called you have 8 gigabyte that's good enough for your rails app okay so I see all these details it looks good I might have to go back here and open port 80 so I can put this thing on the internet okay so maybe I may have more than one security you know, group uh, maybe I have an existing group uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I open everything, right? Let's just, okay, here is this, this, this thing, open everything. Okay, let's launch it. And now here's the interesting thing. They're like, you're not, uh, it's like having your secret key and access key again. Amazon, here you can, you create your own um, key and then you access Amazon using this key, okay? Uh, I think in some cases uh, you can create, uh, I think this is my trial account to demo, so I don't have any existing one, but my own one, I don't want to create a new key every time. But now if you have this key, then you can, two ways for your friend to access to Amazon. One, you set up the root password and that friend access with it. Two, you give that friend this key. Usually, this key you download once and you keep it like last resort, super secret. Never need to touch it again, but it's okay. So we'll see. Um, this is like you know lab seven demo, and I will download the key. It's a private uh, key file, so I download it. I'll put it somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I just put it in the SSH folder, uh, and then I launch the instance. I th I'm not sure what happens if you choose without key pair. I think. You might have to upload the SSH key. I'm not sure. Okay, so we have the instance. It's a bare bone Ubuntu box. We need to access to it. That's one. So let's start typing uh, here. This is our to do list. When you launch a, a Rails app now, you need to uh, basically store a the private key file uh, .pm in a good place. You can SSH to the server using that PEM file. But then when you SSH in, what's the first thing you should do? Just like you can push to GitHub. You can now want to access your server, you're going to copy your public SSH key and put it in the server. So that when you SSH into your server, it recognizes you and you don't need to enter any password. Uh, that's ideal. And then after that, you can remove the password. Basically, no one can access the server without the password. Only the computers who access the server that has the public key store should be able to access. Ideally, that's like that. But anyway, I just need to be able to SSH to Ubuntu, and now I just install software, right? Like necess necessary libraries, and then we will deploy the Rails app. Okay, so what happens to this guy? Uh, view launch log, so I just click this guy, I go to instance. This one, um, it's the problem, crazy thing about this, this you know, Amazon, there's too much stuff. But over time, you just know that you work with instance directly, right? Uh, if you need more images, but from this instance, you can create an image, which is like a snapshot of your thing. Uh, in an instance, it will, it's a CPU that's attached to a volume, which is like your hard drive. If you need to increase your hard drive, like 8 gigabyte and it's too small, you have to go to the volume, create a snapshot, and then create a new volume from the snapshot, 
but now the volume is bigger. You have to turn off the server, detach the old hard drive, take it out, and then attach the new volume to the instance. That's an example of the thinking process. How you manage your server. Right? Over time, this can be tricky, right? That's why you need a DevOps person because you make all this mistake in there, it takes a lot of time. That's okay. Are we almost done? Uh, when we're done, this is the public IP and it's like, uh, so there's DNS. If we set up it right, you can actually go to this link, I hope, right? You can go here and we'll go connect to the server port 80, correct? Or you can go to the IP address, right, which is just here. Uh, sometimes when you work on something, maybe like you already have a domain name, just go there and set your domain name, something that's going to go connect to this IP. Now, because it's new, you're still development, make sure when you set the domain name, you set the TTL, time to leave, the domain name is as small as possible, 60 seconds. If you put in the default value, is like one day or two days, it means later, if this IP address changes, you go to the, the server and you change the domain name to point to a different address, it takes one day. So. Nowadays, it's quite good. It changes within a few minutes. Yeah. But make sure you set it up very low, you know. Only when you have a lot of users, then you want to set the time to leave uh, uh, the thing in DNS to be a long, long value, uh, okay? Now, because, uh, you know, it's caching, right? Are we done? Uh, almost, so we'll wait. What does it mean running? I think it means we're done, right? So yeah. let's, let's SSH into this. Alright, copy and paste this. Um, now, it takes a bit of understanding um, to know how to SSH into it. So, let's just say, go here, but what's the username? Open to, right? And then it will complain, you have no permission. Right? The internet is quite slow, right? So it will complain. Let's see. Please complain. I think it should be ready, right? I don't know. Uh, let's see anything else. Why is it default? Security setting. Is it enabled? You choose default. Did I choose default? Open. Yeah, open everything. I hope it opens everything. Sometimes you have to double check because this thing can be quite, you know, all this security thing can be confusing. Okay, so yeah, it's default here. If you click on this inbound traffic, everything good. I don't know what's happening. Uh, huh? You can try to ping, but it, it's not working. Uh, ping. Uh oh. Uh oh. So how can I demo this? Um, SSH, or let's say ping Google. I just have something to ping Google. One second. Okay, Google is doing fine. Let's make sure we can SSH. Ubuntu, this one. Let's use the IP address. It's easier. Uh, how's how are we doing with the odd instances? Okay, let's go here. Running. Copy this IP address. That's not fair. Did what, what are you private? I mean private So if you have a bunch of server, you can put them in the local uh, uh, you know you can access them. Because they're all Amazon servers, it's faster. You just access by internal IP. I do, but I want to get some sort of. Uh, is it like so? Okay, maybe maybe it's not meant to happen. So I think I need to you know do some. What is the file name? Lab. Can I not connect? So let's see, huh? SSH up, um, deploy at new blue sky dot. 
Start kita ini. Oh wow. They this is not good. I cannot SSH anywhere. Okay, let's let me just use my phone and uh, use tether instead. One second. I hate this places internet. Okay. All right. Let's try again. I don't remember the syntax. Maybe. Okay. So let's see this. Does it work? SSH deploy. This is one of the server. If I put this on YouTube, some people will probably try to hack the server. All right. Look, I can get in. All right. So what happened? What happened with this guy, man? He stopped. Uh, when you can you open the server Okay, so this launch instance yeah. is. Huh? Okay. Running, status check. Uh, well, there's nothing here that I would know. Security group. So, source. Yeah, source. Yeah. <coughs> what is a FC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So he's only access. Anywhere. Yay! <laughs> that is messed up. All right, good job, gentlemen. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So it usually it warns you, and then you know this one you say.